What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you all 62 of you for subscribing. Channel's growing so fast and I really appreciate it. Today, we're gonna be talking about the calm. So you drank the Kool-Aid, you bought yourself a cob, and now you wanna make the most out of it, which totally makes sense. What people usually do, what I do, is I have it plugged in all the time. So whenever my car turns on, the cob also turns on, and it goes straight to gauges, and I can see the gauges while I'm driving the car. If you're fancy, you can pay someone to hardwire it into your car. You just plug it into the OBD, it gets power from there, and it can also read uh, various vehicle parameters from there. Today, we're gonna be talking about the Cobb, and more specifically, what exactly it is that I watch on the Cobb. Because you bought it, you wanna get the most bang for your buck, so you're gonna wanna have it on all the time, and you're gonna wanna see stuff. The thing is, there's over 400 different things that you can monitor on the Cobb. You can watch like DSG speed, input shaft speed, with different like wheel speed sensor speed you can do like coolant temperature um, oil temperature DSG temperature Haldex oil temperature there's so many things to watch today I'm kind of gonna explain to you which ones I watch and why it's not written in stone if these aren't hundred percent the ones that you have to watch but I'm gonna tell you the ones that I watch why I watch them and maybe you'll kind of get a better sense of how to use your cob and I guess what to look for when you're using it First thing that I watch, and probably a very common one among Cobb owners, among even Mark 7 GTI owners, uh, is the boost. So I watch the boost for a couple of reasons. First of all, I wanna see what my car is peaking at. So when my foot is flat down, I wanna see what the boost is set at by my tuner and kind of how high it is. Also watching the boost helps to see if you have any boost leaks. So if any hoses are loose or if you're not reaching peak boost for whatever reason, you know that your car has a problem. Usually you'll throw an EPC light, but seeing the boost that your car is producing will also help you diagnose issues such as boost leaks or wastegate malfunction or maybe the wastegate gets hit by something and, and now it's out of calibration. Or you won't get an EPC left right away sometime, but you will see that the, the boost, either your car isn't making full boost or you'll over boost, which is the worst situation you can you can probably be in. Just to recap is to see peak boost levels and if I have any boost leaks. And because also it's interesting, I kind of want to know what boost I'm making when I'm pressing the gas. The second thing I watch is AFR, which is the air fuel ratio. I'll do a separate video going more into detail exactly what that means and, and what the air fuel ratio is. But when, when you're idling or when you're cruising around, it should be around 14.7. And from what I've heard, in order to get max power, that's what they say, lean is mean. So when you're foot flat down and your car is making max power, it should be around 12. Usually my car doesn't go doesn't go lower than I would say 11, 11.2. 11 so even that's not bad. Of course my tune, I'm not on the last revision of it. So I do think that there's a little more that we can squeeze out of it. However, I do watch the AFR. It's important, it kind of helps you know how safe the tune is and how much you're trying to squeeze out of the car. You know that if you're on the gas and you see the car leaning out, you see it going 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, you have to get off the gas. So it's a very good early indicator of when your car can no longer supply enough fuel. So you're going too much air, too lean, and basically what can happen is the air temperature inside the piston gets so hot that the piston melts and it will weld itself and your engine will seize, or you'll blow a piston or a rod so you'll basically blow your engine up if your AFR goes too high while you're under load. Watching it is very useful because if you see that happen, you can get off the gas before you blow your engine up or before you uh, melt a piston. All next four should be the same knock retard cylinder one, knock retard cylinder two, cylinder three, and cylinder four. I also watch intake air temperature, which you probably don't need to watch to be honest with you, but I'll touch that in a little bit. But you want to watch the knock retard. What is very important, and I'm going to make another video, I'm going to link it right here. You have to understand what knock is. So I'm going to make a video on what knock is, and hopefully you'll get a better understanding of that. 
for me watching it on the cob i watched knock retard on all four cylinders in order to understand what knock retard represents we have to understand kind of all of the components right so knock is bad for your engine in order to make the peak power your car has to advance timing so retard is the opposite of advancing retard is moving timing backwards so knock retard means that you're retarding the timing due to the fact that there is knock in the cylinder some cars have only one or two knock sensors volkswagens are actually very amazing in the fact that they have four knock sensors on each cylinder so it will actually tell you which cylinder is knocking and how much timing had to be taken away because of that now when timing is taken away you're losing power so your car is making less power the more knock retard you have okay so the camera overheated so we had to take a little break but back to why i watch the knock so i basically watch the knock because it tells you a little bit about the actual quality of the gas it can also tell you if you have a bad spark plug or if you have a bad coil pack because you'll see a little bit more knock on just one cylinder it can also tell you i think right now it's telling me that i have a bad engine mount because i'm also getting knock on only one cylinder and it seems that everything i've done hasn't really changed it much but i can't tell you that when i changed my spark plugs i did get less knock overall on all the cylinders and when i changed to rs3 coil packs uh, which i got from wct performance shout out there were only like 35 dollars my knock went down yet again and to now where it's virtually zero i see like 0 0.75 maybe zero point like nine max uh when i'm on like wide open throttle All right, last but not least, I also watch the um, air intake temperature, the IAT. That's because the hotter the air intake temperature is, the less advance your car is gonna give to your timing, and so the less power you're gonna make. And so I just kind of like knowing when I start off, if it's at a high IAT, I know my car is probably not gonna have that much juice in whatever race I'm doing. I also like, because I run meth, you can see the IAT, and it'll actually drop below ambient temperature when you're running the meth. And so that is also another way for me to tell it the system is running that it's not clogged and then everything is functioning as it should be so that's why i also watch the temperature um it, it's not imperative that you do that you can watch just the knock afr and boost i hope you learned something and see you guys next time